Welcome back to the stream. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate it. We've got a guest here to a hot topic now. Artificial intelligence. We are learning more about it every mm -hmm. day. If you don't know it, basically teaching a computer how to kind of work like a, a human, a, a superhuman, if you will. And for the first time um, to date, AI has created a, a robot from, from scratch, at least here. And it, in just seconds, you know, it learned how to walk at about half the speed of a human. Remarkable. Yes, it is remarkable, and we are learning more about this every day. And this all happened thanks to a research team at Northwestern. And we have the person who led that team here, Sam Kriegman, assistant professor. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me on the program. Yeah, I'm happy you're here because I was telling Sam right before we came out of the break, I said, man, I don't know much about this stuff. So we're hoping mm -hmm. you'll help us break it down. Artificial intelligence is such an abstract concept, right? We're mm -hmm. talking about complex systems and all that stuff, but this is all coming from a laptop. How? What? Please tell us more. Yeah, you kind of show us too, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because we've got this shot here. I mean, you show yeah. us what these things do. I sure. asked him if it was an a elephant, and yeah. he said it could be. It's like it a backwards be, elephant. But kind it moves of. this way, so maybe the opposite way that you would imagine. Okay. We'll see if I can get it to move live, but you know, these kinds of things never quite work as you expected. You can watch our videos to see it move under the so right now we're just seeing it contract. So right now I'm pumping air in and out of this tube that feeds into the top of the robot. Okay. And what that does is it expands and contracts the robot's muscles. Here's what the robot looks like on the inside. And so those muscles, the shape of that muscle and the overall shape of the robot's body that like you said, kind of looks like a backwards moving elephant, was designed by scra from scratch by an AI. We didn't tell the AI how it should look. Okay. Oh. So let's, we're taking a look at these guys right now. So you basically said to the computer, make an AI that can walk, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, remarkably, kind of came up with something that looks like a dinosaur, <laughs> which would have free evolved us, if you believe in that whole thing, fossils and whatnot. <laughs> um, and it walks, not necessarily in that direction, but this was like, how long between you said come up with this and it came up with this? Mm -hmm. uh, 26 seconds on a laptop computer. What? Really? Now, this might look like a dinosaur to you, but I've never seen a three-legged dinosaur before. Right. But maybe those fossils exist yeah. and we just haven't yes. found them. Right, yet. right. But I'm saying more dinosaur like I mean, it looks sure. pre-evolved from us, something that may have evolved into an elephant or something it's like that. It's a simple machine, yeah. certainly. It's a simple creature, you mm -hmm. might call it. And typically, AI requires these supercomputers, and they're very power hungry. They need a lot of electricity. They require a lot of water for cooling. They have a very large carbon footprint. So that's why we're so excited about an AI that can run on, on your phone even to come up with new kinds of designs. And while this machine might not be so useful yet, it represents mm -hmm. a new step in kind of the evolution of AI designing more potentially useful systems that can work in the real world. And I was going to ask that because if I'm looking at it, I can't quite grasp the concept and why this is so important and why you guys are so excited about it as researchers. So what's the next step here? And, and one more time of why this is so important and exciting for you. Well, it's exciting for me because of how fast it is, how smart the AI is in designing the system. So this can teach us a lot perhaps about how animals evolved. You know, we don't have a time machine to travel back in time to watch how it was that animals emerged on our planet. And we can't travel to other planets to watch other examples of life. But now anyone can watch evolution happen on their computer screen. And because it's so efficient, it really is pushing robot evolution to breakneck speeds. And hopefully that means that they will evolve past soft, squishy balloon animals <laughs> and into something that ha can have a positive impact in our world. Yeah. Soft, you said it did this in, in 27 seconds, right? I mean, my only concern is like this is beta version of what becomes Terminator. But mm -hmm. in between that, we just want to make sure you guys don't create 
a, a news anchor, you can create <laughs> a, you can create an AI meteorologist. Uh, don't tell okay. Ed that, but we'll allow you to do that. Just just not a news person. We we, we thank you so much yep, so, for being yes, with us. Yes, Sam Craigman with Northwestern. Thanks for um, sharing what you guys discovered. We appreciate your time and you being here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah. and if you're into AI, if you're into this, you want to learn more. We have the full report for you on our website, cbschicago.com. Yeah, fascinating. Thanks so much for being with us. Mm -hmm. You're watching the stream on CBS News Chicago.